Syncing the Integration Client with QuickBooks. This video will demonstrate how to sync the integration client downloaded from your field service management account with your QuickBooks account. Once complete, both your service management and QuickBooks accounts will be integrated. If you have yet to install the integration client, please refer to the previous video in this training series which will walk you through the installation. For the best video quality, be sure to click the little gear icon in your YouTube player and choose the 720 settings. Let's begin. When you open your QuickBooks account, you will first need to go to your file menu, then select Intuit Field Service Integration, and then select the settings option. If you do not see the Intuit Field Service Integration option in your file menu, you may need to open your QuickBooks account as an administrator for this menu item to appear. On the general settings section of the wizard, you will generally want to keep the first dropdown as QuickBooks Wins, which will sync both sides of the system, QuickBooks and Field Service Management. Everything else in the general settings section, you will most likely want to keep at the default settings. So let's go ahead and press OK. You will then want to move to the Intuit Field Service Authentication. Here, you will need to enter in the authentication code and company name you set up in Intuit Field Service Management when initially installing an integration client. If you have forgotten where that is exactly, let's take a quick look. You will want to go to the Settings tab in your Field Management account, then the Company tab, and then select Integration. If you have forgotten the authentication code, go ahead and press Edit, and type in a new code that you can easily remember. This will be the code you will need when we return to QuickBooks. Once you have saved the authentication code, also write down the company name as written in the line item here. Back in the synchronization wizard in QuickBooks, I will enter in this information and then press OK. Next, you will move to the customers section. This is perhaps the most important section of the synchronization process and must be followed closely. The first step is the drop down, where you must indicate your default customer type as either commercial or residential. This is for new customers you add to your field service management account, but forget to add a specific type to. Thus, if my default is commercial, any non-labeled customer I add to my field service management account will appear in QuickBooks as a commercial customer unless I manually change it. Next, you need to point where your customers labeled as either commercial or residential should be mapped to in your QuickBooks account. This may be different for everyone, but for most, a commercial customer in your field service management account is labeled as a commercial customer in your QuickBooks account. The same would apply to your residential customers as well. If you do not see the appropriate mapping field, you can press the Add button here to add a new drop-down field. Next, select whether you wish for the customer name entered into your field service management account to override and map to the company name in QuickBooks. If you want this to happen, press yes. If not, select no. The next section is only applicable if you are someone that creates separate jobs for every work order in Intuit field service management. If you have already mapped out your customer and residential fields at the top, which you should have, this field will be grayed out. Press OK and then continue to the Items menu. Here, you will first need to indicate where service items you create in Field Service Management should be added in your QuickBooks account. For most people, this is typically Service Income or Job Income, with a tax labeled as Non-Taxable. For non-inventory part items brought into QuickBooks that are added initially in Field Service Management, you will typically want to label this as Parts and Materials, or in this case, Job Materials Purchased, with tax codes set to Taxable. Keep in mind, these titles for these two sections may be different for everyone, but the general principles still remain the same. The sections below are where you associate how items set up in QuickBooks should be labeled when pushed through to field service management. Service items should typically go to services, non-inventory to non-inventory, and inventory to inventory. You will also want to select the default tax agency you wish sales items to be associated with in QuickBooks that are created in field service management. This just assigns a default agency to an item, which can be adjusted separately within your QuickBooks account if necessary. Let's then press OK, and then click into the Invoice section. Next is the Invoice section, which is typically what most are interested in when sending items over from Field Service Management to QuickBooks. 
At the top here, you will have the option of selecting whether you wish to have invoices created in field service management filed to be printed in QuickBooks or automatically emailed. Most should select to be printed here on the left. This just creates a simple backup storage containment for your invoices as most will be directly invoicing out of their field service management account. We advise against selecting the invoice to be emailed option as one wrong email address typed into the system could cause the invoice to be undelivered to its intended recipient. Then select if you would like to have work descriptions brought over with the invoice from field service management and where on the invoice you would like this information to be posted. Most will choose yes and put the work description at the top of the invoice. Next, indicate if you would like the invoice populated with the technician's name who serviced the work. This might be helpful if you are looking to indicate to the customer who the technician was that serviced the work. To finish off the invoice section, go ahead and indicate which of your listed invoice templates you would like field service management information to post on and also the subtotal and discount items you want field service management to map to. If you don't have labels created for this already, go ahead and just press the add button here on the screen and add in the words subtotal and discount for these sections. At the bottom you will also have a checkbox to make all invoices pending. If you wish to have all invoices marked as pending for review once brought over from field service management, go ahead and check this box. However, this is discouraged as most of your invoicing approval will take place in your field service management account. On the advanced tab at the top of the screen are options for those who may fall into two different cases. If you have been using Intuit Field Service Management prior to starting your use of QuickBooks and thus have a lot of previously created invoices, you will need to set up the appropriate codes to bring those over correctly into QuickBooks. The second case is if you wish to change the way numbering works for invoices. By default, all invoices carried over from Field Service Management will use the next available invoice number from Field Service Management. This is great for most, but for those with multiple divisions or departments all using the same QuickBooks account, you may be best served to select the QuickBooks numbering option here on the bottom. This will label each invoice with the next available invoice number in QuickBooks while placing the field service management invoice number in the memo field. Once you have finished with this section, press OK. Next you will want to go into the Diagnostics tab. Make sure all the check boxes on the left are checked, and we're going to want to start our verification process. This should take a few seconds depending on how much data is being verified. Once the verification is complete, go ahead and press OK. After you press OK, the settings box disappears. Now that we have finished configuring the settings, it's now time to sync the systems. Go to the File menu, select Intuit Field Service Integration, and press Synchronize at the top. The first step to map the synchronization is to line up your tax codes between QuickBooks and Field Service Management. For the most part, you will just want to line up the non-tax items with non-tax items and tax with tax, as seen here. However, you may have a few items in QuickBooks that your Field Service Management account does not recognize. If this is the case, in this case PRI in QuickBooks, you will want to create a new class in Field Service Management. Then, go ahead and press Next. The tax items that need to be synchronized will be presented in front of you. In this case, the HVAC unit tax I have in Intuit will be pushed over to QuickBooks, and the California Franchise Tax Board tax item I have set up in QuickBooks is going to be pushed over to Intuit Field Service Management. Then press Next. Next is the Customer Synchronization section, where you will see which of your customers are going to be pushed through from either your Field Service Management account or your QuickBooks account. If there's any one customer or set of customers you wish to not have synchronized with your QuickBooks account or Intuit Field Service account, you can click on the customer's name and then click the red Do Not Synchronize button, which will label that customer as a non-synchronization item. You can also do this for any of the other synchronization fields we walk through in the synchronization wizard. Once you're finished identifying which customers you wish to push through, press Next. Next will be your item synchronization. For the most part, you're just going to want to press Next. This is just showing which items from QuickBooks are about to be pushed over from Intuit Field Service Management or vice versa. So let's go ahead and press Next. Depending on how many items you have, this process could take a while. Once again, feel free to leave, come back, and just uh, check periodically on the status of the synchronization. Press Next. Press Next again. 
Group item synchronization, for the most part, you're just going to want to press next, just showing you which items are going to be synced up. Continue to press next. The last step is the payment methods. You just want to make sure that your cash is associated to cash in QuickBooks. Line up each line item from field service management with QuickBooks, check to check, visa to visa, and whatnot. Um, for the most part, these should come in already matched up unless you use some unique abbreviation for one of these things, in which case you'll just want to make sure and verify that each item is lined up correctly in both accounts. Go ahead and press next again. And we are finished. As a general best practice, you should go through the synchronization process a few times a week, if not daily. In your general settings section, you can change the frequency you are asked to synchronize. Go to your file menu, select Intuit Field Service Integration, and go back to the settings tab. Under the general settings section, you can increase or decrease the amount of days between your next prompt. One final note to touch on is the need to take an extra step whenever adding a new customer into your QuickBooks account versus adding a new customer into your field service management account. If you add a new customer into QuickBooks initially, then want to push the information over to your field service management account, you must make sure that the correct type is set for the customer before the synchronization process occurs. As an example, if I press the Customer section of QuickBooks, select a customer, and then go to the Additional Information tab, I will see a drop-down labeled Type. Like previously stated, this customer type must be properly indicated prior to syncing into Field Service Management. Please continue with the next video in the training series to continue your education of Field Service Management.